Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today I want to talk about playing near and far solo. So near and far is listed as a uh, two to I think it's four player game, yeah. Um, and the Amber Mines expansion, it was meant to be a competitive storytelling game. The Amber Mines expansion added a cooperative element where you have the the Red King here and essentially you're working together to defeat him. Also there's a module you can add in to increase the difficulty where his minions are kind of taking up spaces in town and as you move along this track those minions if left unattended will do negative things to you. The cooperative mode however is really just a take whatever score has been reached on this time track and double it. So there's no reason why you couldn't just say, all right, this is the score I need to beat. I don't need to double it. Here we go. Also, the setup for the game is meant to be when you're playing cooperatively, or maybe it's in the campaign, I can't remember, but essentially four uh, book tokens per player. Well, you just take that and you only put four out. All right, all of this is super easy to manipulate down to a one player. Uh, mode. You have a, a timer here that's forcing you to put out your uh, 14 campsites within the timer. It gives you a score that it, it increases as time goes by that you can attempt to beat. It also gives you, like I said, some minions if you want to play with that module. But let's be honest here. Near and Far is not about building up your engine. It's not about strategic worker placement. Near and Far is about the story. You play a game like Near and Far for the experience, not for the pride in saying you were the winner of the game. Now, the biggest fallback to games like this, where there's a storybook and there's decisions to make, uh, let's take a look at uh, one of the storybooks here. This is a page from the uh, introductory scenario which they recommend you play so technically some people might consider this spoilerish but um, take it with a grain of salt so what you have here is some flavor text and then two choices which when you're playing with other people they're going to be reading this to you when it's when you come across you know uh, passage D on the map and then they give you two options are you going to do skill 7 or skill 4 and they read the the text that's in all caps and bold then you have to complete a skill check you know using your dice and paying your hearts and things like that in hopes of completing the quest and so on and so forth the biggest drawback to playing a game like this solo is that you have to read the passage yourself and it's super hard not to peek ahead and see you know oh you know what am i going to get if i if i go with this but it's possible but i'm here to tell you there is now uh it's been out for a little while now but i just recently went ahead and purchased it and that's the foreteller app for near and far so this is uh you know what it looks like on the screen you can see here that it basically is broken down by map or by character because if you're playing a specific character campaign which is essentially just kind of eight quests over the course of like two to three maps and then you play the final map personally my favorite way to play near and far because it's a very small condensed campaign um and is very um uh, linear story that you can follow so currently right now i've been playing a character campaign with Greer here the, the kind of iron giant character and so you can see here that he's got his introductory text and then below it you have all of his when when you're playing with a character no matter where you go on the map no matter what number it might say you're still going to do whatever is listed next on your cards you're always going to start with him his name is Greer so he's G1 and then you can see I would do G2 G4 and whatever I get next it'll be G7 so when I get to G7 I'm going to come down here and you can see that there is it's already telling me it's going to be two skill fives so essentially I'm just going to have to make a choice which direction do I want to go? But up here, you know, it's saying my choices are to lose a coin and skill four or skill six. Um, and up here at the very beginning, it was skill five or skill seven. Usually 
you know, early on in the game, you're probably going to go for skill five because you don't have, you know, the, the skills necessary. Either way, you can see what's here. Now, I'm going to play something, but I'm going to mute it. So I'm going to play something here that has, uh, I've already listened to, so I'm not worried about, but I didn't want to spoil anything. I also don't want to uh, have any copyright infringements with Foreteller. So, and this also will completely remove any spoilers from like Greer's campaign here. But what you would do here is click and this is one thing that I found out the wrong way. You can't just click anywhere within these two lines. You got to click w right up here specifically on the G1. If you click on skill five or skill seven, it, it thinks you have completed that skill check. So let's just click on this. You would press play. Now normally, you know, if my iPad wasn't muted, it would be giving me the very well done voice acted uh, flavor text for Greer. Um, but let's go ahead and just help this along here. Because at the end of the flavor text, it's going to read you the choices in bold and then it's gonna tell you, all right, do you ask the first person you find or do you spend time searching for a professor? And it tells you very clearly, you can do skill five or skill seven. At this point, this is when you would start rolling your dice. You'd start counting up your you know, skill icons on your uh, active party. You'd be paying hearts and then you determine, all right, I did skill five and boom. It's now gonna give you the flavor text for completing that mission. Again, I'm going to skip over that so there's no spoilers, but now it tells you that if you are, were successful at five, you're gonna get one reputation and a red faction token, and you earn G2, which is how you keep up with you know your character. But if you made it as far as seven successes, you get a gem, and then you just say finished. It's so simple. But yet it hides that information from you and this is your second player this right here gives you the ability to play this game solo without any spoilers without any threat of cheating and it's very well done voice acting you don't have to be flipping through a book anymore solid 10 out of 10. so ladies and gentlemen this was just uh, always going to be a quick video um but Near and Far is my <laughs> second favorite Red Raven game by Ryan Lockett. Uh, and that's simply because Sleeping Gods is still easily one of my top two or three uh, you know, board games of all time. That one's very hard to beat. But this one is, is very close behind. Excellent storytelling. Three, four different modes to play. You can play cooperatively. You can play competitively. You can play arcade mode where you don't even... You have these cards here which don't you don't worry about the flavor text you just flip one over and it gives you you know skill eight or skill five um and then it gives you the reward if you're successful so super quick and easy you can play cooperatively against the red king you can add in um you know all these different modules there's so many options here that anybody can find something to play but I just wanted to share with you if you weren't aware or if you were on the fence or were not sure about how the Foreteller app would work for a game like this where there's decisions that had to be made and then rewards at the end. This solves that needing a second player problem. There is no reason why I would not recommend Near and Far to any person out there who wants to play solo. You could even play, in my opinion, without the amber mines expansion because like i said before this game is about the experience it's about the narrative experience it's about the storytelling it's about the journey you go on throughout the game it is not about winning or losing this right here which comes in the amber mine expansion gives you a timer gives you a score to beat which does help you feel like you're playing the game and not just reading a book but do not sleep on this game if you're looking for something that is going to give you lasting memories as a board game experience, check out Near and Far. And if you happen to only be able to play solo, check out the uh, Foreteller uh, app here. 
I can jump back out so you can see Foreteller has tons of games and their library is just growing every day. And this is uh, uh, this is not a paid advertisement by Foreteller. I paid for my copy of uh, Near and Far. You can see I have Madara and Frosthaven as well. Um, and probably will be picking up um, Sleeping God Crimson Skies or whatever it's called when that one lands just because I am becoming enamored more and more with their stuff. So that's going to do it for today. I just wanted to share this uh, experience with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I will put a link uh, in the description to Foreteller's website. Um, otherwise, you can just search for foretellergames.com or Foreteller Games. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.